Which role do ethics play in translation? Coming up. Hello and welcome back to the Freelanceverse. I hope you're all doing well and I hope you enjoyed last week's Stay in the Life video. They are super fun to make, so let me know in the comments if you like them and I can do uh, part three and four and five of them. Uh, it could be a cool series, I think. Uh, today's video is a sit-down video. I'm going to talk about a topic that I wanted to talk for a long time. It's ethics in translation. And this week, actually, I got a comment from Mel. Mel is very involved in this channel. Uh, I'm sure you're watching right now, so thanks so much for your support. It means a lot. Uh, she wrote, hey Adrian, I have a question for you. Do you have a golden rules about your job? Do you simply translate everything? I question myself about ethical considerations. Very great question. Thanks so much, Mel. So let's talk about ethics. What does it mean to be ethical? So I did some research and I'm going to spy a lot here on my screen. Uh, apologies for that, but I really wanted to get uh, to inform myself if there is actually a set of rules, ethical rules for translators to follow. And apparently there are a lot, so you can do your own research and look into them. I picked one here with from the French Literary Translators Association. Uh, ATLF is their acronym. I'm gonna link everything down below. And these rules are actually from 1988, so they are very old. But when I read through them, they still hold very much weight. They, they still apply to decisions that I make a lot. Uh, what I noticed, you can really split the uh, ethical decisions of translators into two separate realms. The question before you accept the job uh, about ethical um, convictions that you have, and then the ethics on its own while you're working on the job, right? These are two different things that you have to consider. Uh, so let's look at the first one first, because this doesn't really apply to the rules yet. The first one is really about, do you accept any kind of jobs? Mel writes, do you simply translate everything, right? And this will come up when you, when you manage to accumulate clients that uh, work in a, in a, in a broad uh, field, you know, you get asked uh, a lot of different topics to translate. I do myself as well, right? Sometimes I, I get, I get asked uh, sometimes quite weird things, right? Once I worked for, for an Australian uh, underwear company that made very like provocative men's underwear. Uh, and uh, this this was the very beginning of my career. And I I mean, I found it funny. Like I'm, I'm not offended by that, but you know, in, in certain countries where, for example, uh, it's not it's not allowed, it's not even legal to be gay, right? Uh, working on something like this would could have offend a translator very heavily, right? Uh, it can be for religious reasons, it can be for personal reasons, if maybe you have uh, bad experiences in your family with alcohol, with drugs, and you don't want to work on for an alcohol brand, you don't want to promote smoking, for example, or uh, like oil companies, drilling things, just that these are commonly uh, known uh, ethical dilemmas that translators face, right? Uh, I just recently worked on a, on a whole campaign about smoking. Well, not a campaign, it was a survey about smoking and about e-cigarettes and stuff. And I could see how some people wouldn't want to work on that. I, for myself, I would never work on something to promote smoking, but this was different because it was a, sur it was a survey that was made um, to interview smokers that want, or not that want to quit, but just a, a subset of smokers, and then the survey kind of let them through and it, it uh, filtered out the people that don't want to stop smoking and the ones who want to quit continue the survey. So I, I felt like this is something that I want to be part of, uh, but there are definitely things that I would never accept uh, to translate. And uh, I don't need to openly tell you what exactly these convictions are, right? Because as I said, it's all personal. Just really think to yourself when a job comes in, Am I comfortable with this? Am I, do I want my name to be behind that, right? Does, that can also happen because it, maybe if it's a big publication, your name might even be in there as, a, as the translator, right? And if you don't really believe in the subject matter, you should be careful with that. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't take it because especially in the beginning, you just want to make money, right? I also wrote then with Mel a little bit and she said, you know, I want to say no, I wouldn't go against my convictions, but if they really offer a very lucrative project, in the beginning, you might just do it to earn money, right? Because if you don't do it, I mean, that's the whole fallacy, right? If I don't if I don't fly in the plane, someone else will, so the planet gets polluted anyway. It's kind of a non, yeah, it's kind of a logical fallacy in this argument. If I don't translate, someone else will, but I know what you mean. I know what you, uh, I know what's the thought process behind that, right? Uh, 
don't feel bad about saying no if, if it goes against your ethics, right? Just uh, be clear about that, be honest. Uh, if you if you feel comfortable with that, if you don't want to disclose, I don't know, maybe you don't want to disclose your religious beliefs to a client. So you can just say, I don't have any availability this month or this week. I can't help you with this project. Perfectly fine. No one, no one will ask anything. But if you want to make sure that you don't get offered this, this topic again and again, uh, just tell them, you know, I'm sorry uh, for this and this reason. I don't feel comfortable working on this topic. If it's a whole company that you want to work with, right? If, if you uh, know of a clothing company that has some shady dealings in the background that maybe uses uh, uh, child labor, if you, if you know of some very big um, corporations, I'm not going to name them, that destroy the groundwater in Central Africa, right? If you don't want to work with them, like I do sometimes, I don't want to work with them, uh, just completely tell either the PM, and probably you don't get in touch with these big corporations as a freelancer on its own. Usually it's through an agency or through, through a, a communications department or a supply chain com uh, company. Just tell them I'm not up for working with this client, right? I, I did this a few times and then the, the PM usually says, oh, I totally understand. Thanks for letting me know. And that's it. That's the one part of ethics, right? The one before the job. Now let's look at what you have to ethically do correctly when you accept the job. Now this has nothing to do anymore with sensitive topics, right? This is just in everyday jobs, there are certain rules of ethics you need to apply. This is where I would like to introduce you to the 10 rules of the ATLF. So the first one here on the list is translators, translators must have adequate linguistic competence. Uh, I always say on my channel, only advertise yourself as a professional translator and charge money if you feel comfortable, if you have overcome imposter syndrome to an extent, if you can say, hey, I'm good enough, I'm better than most of the people in the world in this specific thing, I feel comfortable charging money for this service, right? Because if you if you don't believe in yourself, you're not gonna do good work and then it's ethically not uh, feasible or not uh, justified to charge someone money for. Um, that's actually, it seems very straightforward, but that's a big, big, big point, right, in the industry. Unfortunately, people do everything to make a living. I, I understand why, of course, but um, especially in English, especially in Spanish, so many people offer services not in the native tongue and um, it just gets muddled and the, yeah <clears throat> make sure you know exactly how good you are that you trust yourself and then charge money for it translators must have knowledge of the pertinent subject matter make sure to only accept jobs if you feel comfortable doing it right don't accept any uh, surgical uh, machinery jobs if you are uh, specialized in legal right it doesn't make sense don't work on a sports retail project if you are specialized in uh, heavy uh, oil drilling right because again it goes back to the first one you're not competent enough to accept this job this goes against ethics uh, if you did this in another more regulated job uh, you would even commit a crime, right? If you if you do things you're not uh, competent to, for, uh, so be careful with that. Number three, translators may refuse to translate a document conveying a message they do not agree with. That's the first part that I already talked about, right? If you don't feel comfortable working on it, you can of course refuse it. Sorry, my SD card was full again. I should really start checking that before I start filming. <laughs> okay, where was I? Uh, I think the third one, right? Yeah, the, to refuse work, uh, we discussed it in the beginning, uh, no question. Number four, translators may only alter a text with the author's consent. Very important. In other words, uh, be accurate, right? Um, don't just think you can uh, change what the author wants to say just to make it sound better. That's very important. Sometimes you have like a a metaphor in mind in, in German or in your native language or maybe a, another way to say something but always think of the double meaning right you don't want to put words into someone's mouth uh, let me think of an example quick it's a very basic example but if someone says uh, you know the show was not bad and you didn't write you didn't translate it as uh, the show was good which technically could mean the same thing right not bad equals good but it's, it can be a very different connotation, right? Not bad can you even mean two things, right? Someone can say, oh, the show was not bad, or someone can say, wow, this show was not bad, right? That's a very different not bad. And then 
translating it with good with good maybe it doesn't do it justice so these things you really have to pay really good attention uh, to the source text always ask for more uh, uh, references if you if you don't have enough context that's actually one of the next points coming up uh, so be accurate definitely number five translators may demand the related documents necessary for the translation as i just said always ask for context right don't just translate if you only have a five word job it can change the whole thing if you have the context around it right don't think just because something is short it can just be done on the fly just uh, uh, next to another job right uh, context matters more than in any other profession i feel like number six translators must respect privacy rules that is so important becomes more and more important with with things like deep l becoming very popular um, i'm not against using it i use it myself sometimes just make sure to buy the license if you use a tool like this i can't stress it enough whatever you put online is there to stay right if you use a ser service for free then you are the price you are the product and if you put a client's text into deep l then the system uh, the whole ai system uh, eats this up right and uses it to then produce better and better content so in a way you are giving away information that is not yours to then make you obsolete in the future. So be really careful with these with this kind of stuff and always respect the privacy rules that your client gives you. Uh, for some people, I work on like very secure servers. They even give me email addresses and I only communicate with the specific email address with this client, right? So everything is, is safe. And then don't go out of your way and, and don't respect these rules because um, they're there for a reason, right? Uh, make sure you back up your files. Uh, don't work in public without a VPN. If you want to use a VPN, make sure to click the link in the description. Uh, I'm partnered with NordVPN. They have a very good deal for you. So if you are someone that works in cafes a lot, make sure to make use of this because it's so important to have a secure uh, network when you work not in your own home network. And also your home network should be secured anyways as well. So privacy becomes more and more important. Pay attention to that. Next up, translators must ensure that their name appears on book translations. That's only relevant to literary translations, but there it is very relevant. It's actually an open discourse that I learned in my specialized episode. You can click here if you're interested in book translation. Uh, there and also the, the next point is is uh, similar to that in the case of co-translation the names of all translators must appear uh, this happens in book translations this happens also in academic articles they're usually also uh, noted the the translators there so if you want if you feel like you should be uh, recognized credited for your work for your translation make sure you to let your uh, uh, clients know it's a right you have and you could definitely ask for that the last one on this list is kind of a funny one i haven't heard of this and i'm not sure what could be meant by that translators must refuse work detrimental to a fellow translator if you don't know what detrimental means i also had to look it up it basically means that is um bad that is uh uh, could harm another translator so you, you must refuse things that could harm another translator um Yes, please do that. Please don't harm any other translators, but it's a strange point to include there. Anyways, the, the ones above were, were uh, more than enough. And what I would personally add to this list is uh, be professional, always be professional, uh, be kind in your communication, um, be up to date with your business development, uh, invest in things. Uh, that that make you a better translator stay up to date in your in your target language in your specializations um, because that's also part of the ethics right you, you don't want to fall behind in the latest developments and then not be able to to uh, offer very good uh, translations just because you don't invest in cpd another point i wrote up is be sensitive to to cultures right be very con culturally mindful that's something we have a, a very strong uh, notch to anyways as translators and that's important um, don't assume other people's opinions uh, <laughs> if you think someone is saying something that's untrue in a source don't just correct it in the target, right? You are there, you are the gateway between source and target. You're not there to correct or to put words into someone's mouth. If you really think something is untrue, if someone maybe makes a claim uh, that you know is not true uh, in sports, if I come up uh, with an art, if I translate an article about a game and they say, uh, this guy scored the last goal and I know it's not true, someone else scored it. 
don't just correct it in the target. That's not a good look, right? Always go back to the client, tell them, hey, I know that's also good for you, right? Because you can say, I noticed there's a mistake in the source. You really need to change the source. I should I directly adapt the target or do you want me to do you want to send me a new source? Uh, don't just change things beforehand and then inform the client that's not good. And this, of course, it's very last minute and it needs to go out immediately. I have a client that sends like push notifications to phones and sometimes they have to go out immediately after a game. And there it makes sense to, to really adapt it. If you are 100% sure that you're right, you can change it there. But you need to have the trust from the client first. Uh, yes, yeah, so always stay impartial. Uh, don't get offended by things. It's You are not there to, to judge someone and you're not there to be judged. You're there to be a gateway between one person speaking one language and another person speaking the other language. You want them to exactly understand what the person means, right? There you go. This is my take on ethics in translation. Let me know down below if there are things that you would never translate. Uh, you don't need to tell me why. This is your personal things. Just let me know if you have thought of, of this uh, uh, thing extremely interesting topic I find and uh, I'm happy Mel reached out and I could make this video I hope you enjoy it too I'm just gonna film right after that another video so I, I'm a bit uh, ahead again I hope you enjoyed it and I see you next week with another completely different video I see you then take care